to Germany. From Alaska to Puerto Rico. All over the world, the United States Army is on the alert to defend our country, you, the American people, against aggression. This is the big picture. An official television report to the nation from the United States Army. Now, to show you part of the big picture, here is Sergeant Stuart Queen. The problems which face an army are not always military in nature. Sometimes they involve situations far removed from the immediacy of a battle line. Such a situation presented itself to our soldiers after the defeat of Germany in World War II. The youth of Germany needed reorientation. It was important that they be diverted from their past environment of regimentation and intolerance and understand the ways of democracy. This was the heritage of German youth, nourished on the seeds of fascism, flowering with the oppression of peoples, a system with a future that fed on the dead carcasses of conquered nations. This was Germany in the summer of 1945. Her cities shattered, her leaders dead or taken prisoner. Her children newly released from Nazism to wander the streets, often homeless and without firm parental guidance. Only the vultures flourished in this mire of confusion. German youth was hungry, not only for the daily meals, which in most cases could not be provided in disrupted homes, but hungry for recognition, love and respect. Hungry for something to fill the void left by the crooked ideologies of Hitler. The man who left them with a new heritage of begging and delinquency. It was in this chaotic atmosphere that soldiers of the American army unofficially took a hand in reorienting and democratizing the youth of Germany. A little bar of candy works just the same in Germany as it does anywhere in the world with kids who don't speak your language. When you really want to be understood, there are no conversational problems. And it's not too difficult to make friends with children, especially when you speak with such an international sign of friendship as this. These first efforts to win over the youth of a defeated nation were spontaneous gestures on the part of our troops. American soldiers have traditionally responded to the wistful appeal of children in need. Through friendship and understanding, our army began to help these children successfully bridge the gap between the vicious doctrines of the Third Reich and the ways of democracy. The United States Armed Forces took official notice. After a study of the situation, the Armed Forces Assistance Program to German Youth Activities was born. Food, a scarce commodity in those early days, proved in most cases to be the opening wedge. But it was just the first step of an ever-widening program in which our soldiers donated their time to bring a new way of life to children who had never known anything other than war and a tough fight for survival. GYA is not a welfare organization, nor is it entirely an educational program. It's designed to stimulate and organize voluntary assistance to the kids of Germany by the people themselves. The Army's aim is to assist in getting the centers started, but wants the kids to run them. In the process of working and playing together, they learn respect for others and how to govern themselves in the democratic way. There is usually a festive ceremony when a unit is turned over to the community. Merke sich in diesem Hause auf weiterhin ein echtes Gemeinschaftsleben entwickeln. Ich hoffe, dass hier die Jugend Stuttgarts 
Speaking in the native language, Dr. James B. Conant, U.S. High Commissioner for Germany, officiates at the presentation. Then a young member of GYA expresses his sentiments. We express our sincerest gratitude and deepest appreciation to the United States and its armed forces assistance program to the German, to the German youth activities for creating a GYA program and recognizing many of our needs until this very day. We also want to express our sincerest gratitude to the city of Stuttgart and the Lord Mayor Dr. Gett for the continuance of this youth work. For all this, we are all very grateful, more than words can express. Thank you. A lot of cooperative spirit and elbow grease go into making these three letters GYA a living program. This project at Karlsruhe was designed by army engineers and built by the community. At Stuttgart, the building was donated by the town and equipped by the army. The Ludwigsburg Center is a beehive of activity. These centers are the most popular place in each town for the kids. On free afternoons and evenings, they become the gathering places for children of all ages. They stream in from every direction and by many methods of transportation to work at their hobbies or take advantage of the many opportunities for learning more about a world they've only heard of, but never seen. What goes on here? Why are they so eager to be part of this program? See for yourself. Here are some of the reasons why GYA is the hope of future Germany. One of the most popular activities is working with wood. Here in the carpentry shop, the children not only derive a great deal of pleasure out of making things that they can actually put to use, but they are also learning the foundations for a trade or skill with which they might eventually earn a living. There are many kinds of tools to work with. Some are basic, but many of them are modern power tools. Some of the projects are quite complex, and it's a proud moment when the results of their labors go on display. For those more artistically inclined, there's clay modeling. This young sculptor is doing a portrait head of himself. A more practical use of clay is in the field of ceramics. Decorating a piece of pottery calls for a great deal of facility with a paintbrush. This boy turns out a vase with one of the oldest tools of man, the ancient potter's wheel. Finally, the big moment. The clay has been fired and comes out of the kiln. Their cooperative labors have borne fruit. Everybody who wants to make music can get into the act. This session combines an unusual group of instruments. The violins get plenty of support from the recorders, the sticks, and the triangles. Emphasis here is placed more on participation rather than virtuosity. Modern troubadours, a group of guitarists sing with a gusto of strolling minstrels. The only difference is a slight concession to the American cowboy. These small relaxed groups build confidence, one of the many byproducts realized from these activities. Not all the results can be tabulated. Some are intangible, like the morale factor that binds most members of GYA closely together as the result of their joint accomplishments. 
For the teenage ladies, there are classes in modern dance. In a clean, joyful atmosphere, they acquire knowledge, pleasure, and poise. All the activities of the GYA program are originated by the youngsters themselves. Consistent with a democratic way, it is they who decide the type of work or play. Young men and women are encouraged to carry on the customs and folklore of peaceful and harmonious living. Nobody has to be called twice when it's time for folk dancing. They wear the traditional costumes of their particular section of the country. A typing class meets. For many, this is an opportunity for learning a useful skill that they might not ordinarily receive in the normal course of their lives. Around the radio clubs, a ham is an enthusiast and not a sandwich. Communications are established with distant parts of the world. Call letters are exchanged. A most important aspect of this project in making new friends in distant lands. Solving the mysteries of construction, maintenance, and operation is under the supervision of soldier experts who volunteer a great deal of time and equipment. To most girls, sewing comes naturally, but in a country devastated by war, the materials to work with are hard to get. Through GYA, odd pieces and surplus stocks of American concerns are procured. The results are on display in an annual event, the GYA-sponsored handicraft show. Gardens flourish around most of the clubs, a very worthwhile endeavor that produces a harvest in more ways than one. These plots are planted and maintained by members in every age group. One of the more ambitious projects is to assist in the establishment of summer camps, which give the youngsters a chance to spend a number of days away from home in the outdoors. Our personnel aid the civil authorities in building these recreation spots. The facilities of the camp depend to a great extent upon the cooperation willingness and initiative of both the young people participating and their leaders. Many camps are built by the kids themselves. Some U.S. Army engineer equipment has been utilized to clear campsites and help erect and construct housing and play areas. Much of the property has been donated by the Army, public-spirited individuals, or community offices. These camps are a lot of fun, but they're also an excellent example for the young people to see the democratic way in action. There's a complete absence of the heavy-handed discipline which dominated their early life under the Nazis, which if continued, might prove a menace to world peace. Everyone pitches in to perform the various tasks necessary to keep such a large project functioning smoothly. As these young Germans make the effort to see a different kind of life, they enlarge their chances to live in a world free from war. Perhaps in no other sphere of activity is there an opportunity to learn fair play and cooperation than in the numerous types of sports offered. Baseball ranks high in popularity. Although it was little known in Germany before the conflict, the examples of hot competition shown by our service teams have stimulated a great deal of interest in the new generation. Many teams are named after American Major League clubs, and there is a constant demand for more detailed information about America's national pastime. In their roles as coaches, umpires, or judges, 
our military men and women have gained the confidence of thousands of young Germans. Most of our soldier instructors are well qualified to teach or give aid. Many of them were well-known athletes before they entered the service. Uniforms and equipment are generally provided by sponsoring units of our army. But the rules say only nine men to a team, and this guy will have to just wait a little longer. Individual sports like ping pong are also encouraged. The objectives under GYA are good health, teamwork, and fair play. German boys have also taken to basketball, another game which is strictly American in origin. Emphasis is placed not so much on winning as upon participation and team play. The overall program encourages youth of all ages to take part in whatever sport they prefer. Unlike the sports of the previous generation, nothing is compulsory. When these kids play, they play a free choice and not as a part of a master plan. A brass band and a parade heralds an eagerly anticipated event, the Soapbox Derby. Once strictly an American institution, this gravity-defying dive down a hillside has been adopted by young Germany. They come from all parts of the country to compete with these motorless speed buggies. The spectacle draws thousands of onlookers of all ages. For many of our men and women in the service, it's just like a Sunday at home. Originally sponsored by GYA, the Derby has been taken over by a German automobile firm. Today, GYA assists the company in organizing and running the show. A wave of excitement hits the contestants as the course is cleared for action and the timers set their clocks. Then comes the moment they've been waiting for as the heats get underway. The same meticulous care is exercised by the German boy in building his racer as is taken by his American counterpart. Many of these gasless girties are built of scrap surplus and waste materials. It's junk when they get it, but it's soon turned into something useful. These hot rods are nothing more than a box mounted on four wheels. But like every other automobile, the important part is the power supply, and each of these contestants has his own formula. Some use body English, some just drive and hope. They roar over the finish line, and there's no use putting on the brakes because there aren't any, except a nice soft bed of straw. First place brings a cash award and a trip to Akron, Ohio to compete in the classic of the small fry racing world, the International Soapbox Derby. Complete with a parade of samey costumes and floats, the annual football classic of our assistance program has all the fun and excitement of a major pigskin pageant. Yes, Pasadena has the Rose Bowl, Dallas the Cotton Bowl, and Miami has the Orange Bowl. But the GYA has its own version, the Vittles Bowl. On the field, the action is by two service teams, and they put on the same kind of a show that can be seen in various parts of America around the time of the new year. The kids of GYA are in the stands enjoying free soda and hot dogs as guests of our armed forces. They see football in action. A long forward pass. It's completed. A dash around the end that picks up plenty of yardage. At Nuremberg, it's Meistersinger time. The modern version of this ancient festival has been revived by GYA. Young singers representing all parts of Germany will compete. Speaking first in German and then in English, Commanding General Charles L. Bolte opens the proceedings.
Dieser Wettbewerb, der zum Nürnberg des Mittelalters gehörte, wurde von dem amerikanischen Armeehilfsprogramm für die deutsche Jugend wieder ins Leben zurückgerufen und ist eins der wichtigsten GYA-Ereignisse. <laughs> Following the tradition of the Meisterzinger competition, as portrayed by Richard Weiger, the contest is open to all. Just as Walter, though an outsider to Nuremberg of the Guild era, was permitted to join in the competition, so too in the present Meisterzinger contest is open to all, be they native Germans or displaced persons. Then the high notes shake the raptors. <laughs> The momentous decision, which will bring fame and fortune to one of the contestants is at hand. The Meistersinger for 1953. The Meistersinger has Clementine Byers. Another young German helped by GYA to a better life. GYA libraries do a big business. Things American have always fascinated the youth of other countries. And these German youngsters are no exceptions. Thousands of pieces of literature have been given by individuals and institutions from back in the United States. Here for the first time through efforts freely donated by our servicemen, German youth can read material which is not propaganda. They can learn the truth about the American way of life and what it stands for. They learn about themselves too, for when they see how things can be done in a way different from what they have known in the past, it's possible to make comparisons and evaluations. Fashion magazines are the big interest of the girls, while the boys go for the more general publications. For places off the beaten path, Bookmobiles with a really large selection of material bring a bit of the outer world. Sponsored, staffed, and paid for by GYA, the bookmobile is an effective way of getting to a big segment of the young people who don't often get to the large cities. It's estimated that since its inception, one out of every four German youths have been reached by GYA. 
In keeping with one of the basic purposes of GYA, which is to provide the basis for an understanding of democracy, discussion groups are organized. In these sessions, as in all other GYA activities, Americans give assistance only where needed. They do not attempt to lead the discussion or influence it in any way. Respect for others is taught in the give and take of group debate. During the infamous Nazi regime, liberal education and free speech had been stifled. The past is scarcely behind them. A history where oppression led the way to destruction, to shoeless beggars with a poverty of spirit, taking no part in the free world's bid for peace, to a generation bereft of guidance, to a system founded on the false principle of domination, a dog-eat-dog -dog existence, where ignorance and irrationality are the key to survival. This was the past. This is the present. Orientation to the fundamentals of citizenship and the dignity of the individual. German youth are at the crossroads. They must continue the road to freedom. Take their place with the free peoples of the world in search of peace and prosperity. Our army is pointing the way. It's up to them. Spreading knowledge of democratic ideals is one of the most important phases of safeguarding peace in the world. Our army is shouldering its responsibilities in shaping a course toward the fulfillment of that purpose. Now this is Sergeant Stuart Queen inviting you to be with us next week when we'll have another look at the big picture. The Big Picture is a weekly television report to the nation on the activities of the Army at home and overseas. Produced by the Signal Corps Pictorial Center. Presented by the U.S. Army in cooperation with this station. You can be an important part of the Big Picture. You can proudly serve with the best equipped, the best trained, the best fighting team in the world today, the United States Army.